Hey guys, I have here a 200 amp circuit breaker from ABB. This is the main battery disconnect in my new power shed build. I built a very nice enclosure for it here out of a junction box and it came out pretty well. So uh, this video is just going to walk you through that build process. This is the circuit breaker I selected for this project. This is an ABB, it's a SACE S3 and it's a 200 amp three pole breaker. And you might be able to see at the top here, it's rated for 500 volts DC. On the left hand side here, you'll see it does include the shunt trip. So basically it's 24 volts AC or DC. Just feed it into these two wires. It engages this coil here, which will disconnect the breaker. Uh, so that's going to be the integration with the BMS or battery management system. This also included some auxiliary contact cables, which I've removed since I won't be using them. But uh, you can see on the right hand side here, the two switches that are built in based on if the breaker is on or off. So overall, I really like these breakers. This is actually the third one I own now. And when I purchased this one, I made sure to get one that have the screw down terminals down here. Uh, this will make it a lot easier. These are designed for stranded wire. We can just stick our wire straight in there. Uh, we don't have to worry about having the lug here and then the two or three inches that come off the bottom that's not bendable. Uh, so the plan will be either to have the positive or the negative. I'm not sure which yet. Probably the positive come up and enter through the top here. Uh, one positive in from the battery and then that'll give me three positive outs here. Uh, so the first two will go to each of my LV6540 inverters and then that leaves me with the third pole for future use. That might be where I feed in an additional charge controller or something like that. Going to try to mount this breaker in this smaller junction box here. Uh, this is a 12 by 8 by 4 deep box and that should fit the breaker in it perfectly in the center like so. And this junction box has this blank panel for the face here. So we'll have to cut out a square opening in this panel that fits the square face of the breaker here. So I have the breaker here situated pretty much exactly in the center horizontally. Let um, me see I'm at two and six and two and six. And then vertically I have it just upward just a little bit more so it's not perfectly center but that's going to allow me a little bit of space at the bottom here to pass the conductors through. So with this breaker positioned exactly where I want it, I'm going to be working with the back side of this cover plate. That way I can draw lines and stuff on it and I won't see it from the front. So I'm going to slide this up against the breaker and just make marks with a pencil where the edges are. I'll do that on both sides here. And I'll do exactly the same from the top and the bottom as well. Uh, so using your basic straight edge here, I've just connected all of those points that I measured and you see I now have an exact square here that I need to cut out for this breaker face plate to fit. So up next, I'm going to mask all of the areas around the square with some basic painter's tape. And uh, that's just going to prevent the tool we're going to use from you know damaging the outside around the area. Uh, in order to cut this square out, I'm going to be using a jigsaw. This is a Dewalt bimetal right blade 18 teeth per inch. I think this is rated for up to uh, 1 8 thick steel so that's good. So in order to get this started I need to drill four holes one in each corner here approximately the size of the saw blade but before I can do that I need to drill a small pilot hole and before I can do that I need to do a center punch here to make sure the bit doesn't wander all the heck over the place. Perfect fit, look at that. Cover hole screws are lined up nicely. There's not a lot of space around the edge. I mean, it's almost a perfect cut. I'm kind of surprised it came out so well, to be honest. So next we need to take a look at the top of the circuit breaker. So I want the positive to come into all three of these terminals. So we need to join all of these terminals together. And these are the cable lugs that came with this breaker. I simply removed them from these top three terminals. And I'll be saving these terminals for sure because these are kind of pricey if you try to find them separately. To make these connections at the top, I picked up this large piece of copper. Uh, this is one quarter inch thick pure copper plate. It's five inches across by two and one half inches in height and I had this piece of copper cut specially for this breaker. I'll leave a link down in the video description to where you can purchase one. I'll ask the seller if he can list a few more of them. Um, that way, if you guys want them, you can pick one up. So the idea is going to be to place this on top here. I used this piece of cardboard to draw myself a little template here so you can see where I cut out in the center so it can sit down with three fingers on top of the breaker like so. And then the idea is going to be that the four aught main positive will come up the side attached like this. That way I don't have to worry about the cable bending radius or anything like that. Uh, so the first step is to transcribe my template onto the piece of copper and then hopefully my jigsaw is powerful enough to cut it out. 
Um, that blade is rated for one eighth copper and this is one quarter copper. So I'm hoping I can just go slow, but uh, that remains unknown. All right, so that took a while, but uh, it did get the job done. That's probably not the right tool for the job, but uh, it's cut. Uh, for these two small sections I need to cut out, I'm probably going to start by drilling a round hole in the center. That way I can run the blade up both sides and then hopefully run it across the top. All right guys, it took a little bit of trimming, but look at that. And it fits perfectly. That's a nice fit there. So the next step is I need to figure out the exact location to drill for these three bolt holes and then add a fourth bolt hole up here where the ring terminal will connect. And I see that sitting probably right about here, so. And I have the four holes drilled in our copper bus bar. The holes line up exactly, so we are good to go. And guys, look how thick this copper plate is. This is nice. So for the bolts here, I went with M8 with a 1.25 millimeter thread pitch. Um, and these are grade 8.8 .8 bolts. Since that was the same grade bolt that was in the original ring terminals, I figured that's probably a pretty good choice. I picked up some 16 millimeter and I picked up some 25 millimeter. Uh, we're gonna use the longer bolt. So we got our longer bolt. We have a flat washer going to feed that up the bottom. And then for the other side, I have a serrated flange nut. So the serrated teeth will bite into this copper plate and help prevent it from ever backing it back out. So here you can see the new bolts and washers on the back side. And then on the front side, we have the bolts and the serrated flange nuts. So for tightening, I place the wrench on the flange nut and I have a ratchet on the back. That way the nut is not rotating as the bolt tightens. And here's how that looks from the front just once more because this is actually looking very, very nice, so. All right, so I have my positions marked on the bottom of this enclosure where I want the cables to enter and exit. On the right hand side, we have a one inch conduit or chase nipple. That's where the four out cable is going to go in. And then we have three, three quarter inch uh, conduit nipples. And that's where the two out cables are going to come out. Now I like these holes to be nice and clean. Uh, so I do use a hydraulic punch out tool. Uh, so this is the shaft piece of the hydraulic punch out kit. Uh, so I need to drill a hole the diameter of this bar here so this bar can pass through. And to do that, I'm going to use this step bit here. So I'm gonna get all four of these holes drilled. Yeah, right, you can see my holes that I punched there with the uh, stepping bit and they're kind of ugly. And this is why I don't like using that for punching conduit holes. Some people use it, maybe they get better, cleaner holes than I do, but. And you can see my knockout punch there on the bench is starting to get a little bit crowded from all the project pieces. But uh, uh, so first is this shafty thing here it gets threaded into, I don't know what you call this, the hydraulic piece. I don't know, what do you call this? So this is the three quarter inch cutting head. You can see the teeth there on the end. And then we have the receiving part of the three quarter inch cutting head. So this goes on first, goes through the hole. Then we put our cutting head on the other side and we tighten down our nut. So next we simply pump the handle a little bit. And there it goes. And that is a much, much cleaner hole there. So conduit nipple will slip in from the top like so. And there's our four completed perfectly punched holes. And there's how the conduit nipples look from the inside bottom of the box. So the last step is we need to mount this breaker to the back of this box. And to do that, going to use the original screws it came with. These are nice screws. They stick through about a quarter of an inch on the end, which is perfect for going through the box and still allowing enough room for this nut to tighten down. So I need to make sure that this is perfectly aligned where it's going to sit when the lid is on. And then I'm hoping I can use this really long drill bit to at least mark off the holes where these screws need to go. There's our four mounting holes there in the center. Let's see how well they line up. And I was able to get the breaker screwed in there. You see I got the positive cable coming up the right hand side going to the top copper plate there. The only challenge that remains is how to get the nut from behind. Uh, behind this copper plate so you can tighten down this bolt. But I was able to slide in a one half inch wrench from behind to hold it. So that worked well and good. The cover plate does line up nicely, but it is about a millimeter or two, you know, tilted this way. You can't really tell unless you're looking for it, I don't think. Overall, I think it came out very, very well. All right, so here it is fully installed and operational. I have the main positive, the four out cable coming up from the right here. It's going up to the bus bar in the top. Then I have cables exiting on the first two positions going to the two LV6540 inverters. 
The third spot is still empty for future use. So here's a closer look at how that looks from the bottom here. And uh, you can see the cables feed through from this wireway here. There's the main positive going in and the two positives coming out. One positive is going up to the first inverter. And this main positive is originating from a Victron bus bar, which I haven't completely cleaned up the wiring yet, so I don't want to show that just yet. But uh, yeah, I think this came out very, very well. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please feel free to leave those. Hit that like button before you go, and thank you very much for watching.